All right, good evening. We're going to take a quick look at this uh, little 12 or 24 volt to 5 volt USB-C buck converter here. It's a nice small little module. It's got a couple of mounting tab ears on the side, completely resin filled, so the PCB within should be completely waterproof and weatherproof. You have nice, extremely flexible uh, 20 gauge silicone DC input wires here and the wire for the uh, USB-C is nice and flexible as well. So let's go ahead and uh, plug it into something. I'm just going to use a quick connector here to make that quick and easy. I'm just going to chain hook it up to a barrel connector. I'm sure I got my red to red, black to black and so on. And I have a 12 volt battery over here that is running through this multimeter, which is configured up in the ammeter uh, settings. So, right now we are reading that without anything connected to the USB C, it is drawing right almost on the dot one milliamp hour of uh, standby current flowing through it. So, that's not very much at all. One milliamp hour is, uh, that's really, 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 really low draw. So there's just a itty, itty, bitty, bitty bit of draw there, but that would take an eternity to put a dent in a car or even a motorcycle battery or anything like that. Um, doesn't even show up on the scale for the, oh, there it is. Just barely the one milliamp hour change it to the next scale up so that we can do a quick test with this old Android phone here um, and then let it measure out. We're drawing about a half an amp uh, just to have the screen on and the phone running and it's it's moving between 300 milliamps and 500 milliamps so we're going to plug this in and what we're going to get is a net number here so it will be the input minus what it's taking to run the phone, run the screen, and all of that. Um, so that's showing around right now about 1200. So if you add 300 milliamp hour of what it takes to run the phone and the screen, we're probably at a 1.5 amp rate on the output of this actual output. Um, we're showing a half an amp a draw on the 12 volt battery. So, you know. Uh, I haven't found this app to be perfectly reliable. You kind of have to take all of this with a grain of salt, but um, definitely getting it's uh, on this phone. It says it is charging. It does not say fast charging. It just says charging. Um, and on I can tell you from previous experience on this phone that if it was slow, it would say slow charging. If it was fast, it would say fast charging. We're right in the middle. It's just plain charging. So neither slow nor fast, just kind of a regular 1.5 amp USB-C output is what that looks like to me, which is just fine and dandy. Nothing wrong with that. So uh, that looks pretty good running off of a 12 volt battery that's nominally at you know about 13.2 volts. I would say, um, actually, which end is on this right now? Uh, let me do a little rearranging here. I'll plug some stuff, move a couple of things around um, because it's it's a uh, 12 or 24 volt, right? I don't actually have a 24 volt battery handy, but I have an idea or I have something that I want to try. Let's undo this connector and put the other barrel connector on there. Bear with me. Red to red. Set that down. And black to black. Right in there. Connection. All right, 
that should be fine. Okay, so I've switched it over to the uh, other barrel jack because I've noticed that some of these, uh, not all, this isn't super common, but a lot of tool batteries are coming with um, barrel jack um, outputs on them here. So this is not quite 24 volts, but my assumption is that this module probably works on uh, anything in the range of uh, 12 to 24 volts, so 18 to 21 volts nominal of this tool battery. Got a really solid chance that this is going to work. So let the phone measure its discharge here, which takes a second, about 400, dropping off a little, and no, it doesn't seem like it particularly likes the tool battery. Not getting any output. Let me just flip over the USB-C connector as I've seen that sometimes be a thing with data cables, but doesn't look like the module likes to run off of the 18 volt tool battery. Might have like a low battery protection circuitry of some sort in there. That would have been cool, but uh, no dice on that. I should check and make sure that I was actually getting power out of that, but I've got a good feeling that I was. Let's just grab our multimeter again. Spin her over to DC voltage. Carefully, carefully, I'm gonna short anything. Carefully connect these, and then I'm gonna use one hand to hold them apart before I put them into the tool battery. And, well, the tool battery is low. This is uh, supposed to be a, it's Mark 21, which means it should be an 18 volt battery. So I've got a battery issue here. It's showing at uh, 14 volts. That's not, uh, that's not right, but at the same time, that seems like that should have worked with the module, but I suspect something is horribly wrong with that particular battery to even get a reading that low. So that was probably a bad example. Maybe I can grab another one real quickly here. Let's see, where else do we have cool tools? They're all over the place. Let's look in this box. This one have okay, so we've got another one. Another one to try. This one is all a Sabum. It's got a barrel jack and an indicator, unlike the other one, and this one says that it's full. So sorry, this video is getting a little long in the tooth, but wanted to know if this would work. Carefully, this is the a port that the battery can be charged with, but I found I can also get power out of it typically. Typically, Let's see if I don't start some kind of a small fire on the workbench here. That's uh, a different kind, kind of barrel jack. Shoot, this, uh, this test is going off the rails. Any more batteries? Any more batteries at all? How about a rigid tool battery? We're just going to keep trying batteries until we get this at this point. Okay, so got a rigid tool battery. It's fully charged. It does not have any barrel jack or anything like that that we can use for this, but what it does have. Um, what I have is a uh, slide-on adapter with a little fuse in it and a handy on-off switch. So this is actually probably what I should have started with because I can very easily put these wires into the way go terminals there. Easy peasy. Wiggle that in, lock it down. Put that onto the battery, and is there measurement access points of that? 
I don't see any, but this battery I know is fully charged, so third time's the charge with attempting to do this with tool batteries. Uh-huh, there we are. So this is a, an 18 volt battery, 18 volt tool battery. All of these are, but this one's actually charged and I was actually able to get it connected. So looks like we're seeing about the same measurement. It's not like hooking it up from 18 volt to 12 volt or 24 volt. The output is going to be the same and that's the point of this converter is that anything 12 to 24 volt coming in it should be able to convert into a usable output that is within the USB spec so it looks like it's doing that it's uh, it's a little under an amp maybe it's a little bit less efficient at this voltage but nonetheless it does work so tool batteries or a 24 volt system or a 12 volt system uh, if you get in the approximate range you should be able to use this simple little buck converter I'm just curious now so I'm going to check what that what the voltage is of the rigid battery pack for your reference don't let those touch you can see that flip the switch 19.56 currently so fully fully charged 18 volt battery is going to be a little bit over cells are fully charged so yeah you can use it um, it seems just about anywhere in the range of 12 to 24 so good good deal with that nice little product works well